Hello, this is Mr. Henry, and welcome to lesson 1.3, Integer Exponents. This central question says, how do I use properties of integer exponents to simplify expressions? So we have uh, the next couple lessons here are going to be all about exponents for the most part. We've got this lesson on integer exponents, learning the properties about them. The next lesson is on um, square roots and cube root, which is basically doing the reverse of an exponent when you're solving an equation. And then in 1.5, we have scientific notation, where we're using exponents in uh, a new way, an application of it. All right. So <clears throat> down for our warm-up in the Collins writing page in front of your packet, this is lesson three. It is a type one. It says, what do you know about exponents? You can draw a picture. You can give an example. You can write out in words. Just what do you know about exponents? And also, can you think of an example of when they're useful? And again, as I said, the most of this lesson, the next lesson, and the one after that, the rest of this module, are going to be about exponents and why they're useful. But so can you think of an example of when they are useful? Go ahead and pause the video, answer this question. When you're ready to continue on to the vocabulary, hit play. And we'll move on. So here we have our vocabulary power, base, exponent. So the power is the entire thing, it's the base and the exponent together. So the entire thing, if I would write out that, this whole thing together is called a power. Now, the base would be the bigger number that's on the bottom. So in the example I put up there, the 2 is the base. So the power is the whole thing. I'll use that same example. The base is the 2. And you can probably guess that the exponent then would be the 5. It's the little number on the top. So, just kind of getting us into the lesson a little bit here, let's look at some different properties. So we're going to start by looking at properties. We're not really doing many like problems of applying them. We're just looking at what these properties mean. So the first property here is we're trying to understand the product of powers property. The product of powers property, what that means, like the title, the name means, is we're multiplying powers together. So we have two powers, like you see. You'll notice they have the same base, 7 and 7. So we're going to multiply these two things together. Now the way that I would think about this problem is if you would take this, 7 to the 4th power, and you would expand it. 7 to the 4th power means 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. That's the first part times this 7 to the 5th power. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's what this same problem looks like if you expand it out. You've got 7 to the 4th power times 7 to the 5th power. But since these are all multiplies, multiply, 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 all we have to do is just Think about this one long line of nine different sevens being multiplied together, which is seven to the ninth power. So we just simplified this exponent. So seven to the fourth power times seven to the fifth power is seven to the ninth power. And there's actually a rule that can help us do this. The rule basically says if you have two exponents, We'll call it like a um, to the n times by a to the m. If you have two exponents and you want to multiply them together, or two powers multiply together, if the base is the same, you add the exponent. And that's what we did here. The base stayed the same, and we add the 4 plus the 5 and got 9. Okay, 
And we're going to go through these in more detail. So we're just going to start by going through each property kind of one at a time, and then we'll look at using them. So this is the product of powers property. Next property here is the power of a power. So another way to write this same problem would be 4 squared to the 6th. So the whole thing is to the 6th power. So you have 4 squared, and this 4 squared is to the 6th power. So you would have, if you would expand it out again, 4 squared times 4 squared times 4 squared, 6 of them. That's 4, 5, 6. So now we have this. But this is just like the last property we just did. We have a whole bunch of powers with the same base. So we know that we can add the exponents. If I would write this out even farther, there's going to be a whole bunch of these guys. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. There's the first one. And the second one. 4 times 4. Third one. 4 times 4. Fourth one. 4 times 4. Fifth one. 4 times 4. Sixth one. But this line, if we, after we've completely expanded this out, we just have 12 fours. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 4 to the 12th power. Do you think you can find a connection between the answer we got here and the problem we started with here? Maybe you notice that it looks like we might be able to multiply 2 times 6 and get 12. And the answer is you can. That is actually the property in this problem. So if I use the variables again, a to the n times by, oopsie, a to the n to the m gives you a to the n m. You multiply the two powers together. All right. So let's look at our next property. This says the understanding the power of a product. So now we have a different base, but the same exponent. Hmm. So let's start by doing the same thing we've done before. We're going to expand this out. So we have 5 to the 4th power, 2, 3, 4, times by 3 to the 4th power, 2, 3, 4. Now, you may not think to do this, but we're still trying to just figure out what these properties are. But let me show you a little um, rearranging trick that's going to make this property a bit more clear. If I rearrange this as a 5 times 3, a 5 times 3, and repeat this, so I have, there's my five, my four fives and my four threes. I've just rearranged it. This looks like 5 times 3 to the fourth power. And that's what it is. I mean, that's the simplified way of writing this same thing. And if we want to do one step further, I mean, this would be 15 to the fourth power. And that's just simplified. You may not have thought to do this, and that's okay. I'm showing you the property so that we can go over it. And you can see here how two powers were kind of combined into one. And if I use my um, letters, maybe we'll call it a to the n times b to the n, those can combine to give you a, b to the n. That's just a way of thinking about it algebraically. That's what we did without the in-between work. Okay.
Next problem says we're going to be understanding the negative exponent property. So in this case, the title itself is obvious. I mean, now we have a negative exponent. But the what we would do is not so obvious. Now, the way that this works, or a way to think about this, is how a regular exponent, like 3 to the 4th power, represents multiplication. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. But a negative exponent is going to think about it like it's division. They're kind of opposites. Positive 4 and negative 4, multiplication and division. So what this actually gives us, it's kind of weird, it's like 1 over 3 times 1 over 3, which in this case is just 1 over 3 to the 4th. Now this is just one way of thinking about it. It's not the only way. Um, a way that I like to describe this is whenever you have a negative exponent, the way you get rid of that negative exponent is you pass it over the fraction bar. So let me give you another example. If we had um, 5 to the negative 6th, there we go. That way I can move it around. So we have 5 to the negative 6. So if I want that negative to go away, I'm going to move it over the fraction bar. So this whole 5 and negative 6 comes down. Now, when I move this negative 6, or the whole term down, the whole power down, the negative goes away. Now it's 5 to the positive 6. And up top, we would have a 1. And that trick works forever. If I had a positive 6 down here, and I move the whole term up top, it would be a negative 6 again. Let me show you something else I made a few years back. So here I have um, a little flash activity I made just kind of show this procedure. So as I take this 5 to the 6th power, now it's positive 6, and it's on the bottom of the fraction, so think of this as a fraction bar. As I take this piece and I move it to the top, the exponent changed from positive to negative. And if I take any of these pieces, this x to the negative third, if I move it down, it becomes positive third. 8 to the negative 2, if I move it up, it goes positive. If I move it back down, it goes negative. So you can actually change the sign of the term you're using by I say moving it over the fraction bar, flipping it over the fraction bar. Okay, so the way we think about this in terms of our algebra, so if I have a to the negative n, for example, to make this not negative anymore, it become 1 over a to the n. So 3 to the negative 4th became 1 over 3 to the 4th. And the last, I think this is the last property, um, for us to look at is the 0 exponent. And this one's simple. The 0 exponent basically tells us that if you have anything to the 0 power, if you have x to the 0, if you have negative 3 to the 0, if you have 97 or 19, 19 to the 0, any number to the zero power equals one. Every single one of them. So a to the zero power equals one. And we can think about this with some of our other properties we used. For example, that first property we learned about. Imagine we had three to the fifth power times by three to the zero power. Well, the bases are the same, so we would add the exponents. So 3 to the 5 plus 0 is still 5. So me multiplying by this 3 to the 0 power, that did not change my answer. It's almost like saying if I took 3 to the 5th power times by 1, I'm still going to get 3 to the 5th power. So that's another way to show this something to the 0 power is 1. Now, 
this chart here is just kind of to show some of these different properties. It doesn't show all of them, but it kind of helps you see a pattern. So we'll start here at 5 to the first power and work our way up. So 5 to the first power is 5. That's just 5 times 1. 5 to the second power, 5 times 5 would be 25. 5 to the third power, 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 is 625. So you notice how we're getting bigger, bigger, bigger going this way. Going down, well, we just said that anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. And now we have negative exponents. We know that if we have a negative exponent, the way we get rid of that negative is we pass it over the fraction bar. So this becomes 1 over 5 to the first power and 1 over 5 to the second power, which is 25, 1 over 5 to the third power, which is 125. So we're getting smaller the more we go down. Another way I just thought of about thinking about this is every time you go one step bigger, you are timesing by 5. I mean, think about it. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Even starting down here, if you start at 1 over 125 and you times by 5, you're going to get 1 over 25 times by 5 times by 5, times by 5. Going the reverse, going down, is a divide by 5. So, 625 divided by 5, 125 divided by 5, divide, 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 divide. So that just kind of helps you maybe imagine or picture these exponents in your brain to help you when you're doing some of your problems. Now, up in your vocabulary box on the right-hand side, there is a section um, for these properties, and I'm going to just give them all to you right here. So these are all the properties we talked about. The first one is the product of powers, and you can see it's the same property I wrote down. A times n times a to the m equals a to the n plus m. That's where you added the exponents together. The power of a product, that's if you had like an, a power raised to another exponent, so like 3 squared to the fifth, you would multiply the exponents and get 3 to the tenth. Power of a product property, if you had two different bases with the same exponent, you can combine the bases together, like there. The negative exponent property tells you if you want to make that exponent positive, you pass it over the fraction bar, so it goes from being a negative to a positive, or I should say a negative on the top of the fraction is positive on the bottom, and the reverse is also true. If it's negative on the bottom, it'll be positive on the top. And finally, the zero exponent property tells you that anything to the power of zero is equal to one. If you need more time to copy these down, pause the video, but I'm moving on. So now we're going to actually look at some problems. We're going to use these five properties to simplify problems that have exponents. Some of the problems are going to be kind of ugly. For example, here it says simplify each expression. Answers should be expressed with only positive exponents. And you're going to see that phrase a lot. Um, typically when you're dealing with exponents, you want your answers to be positive exponents. Okay, so let's go. First problem here, um, well, I see I have the same base, 6 and 6. So eventually I'm probably going to be combining this stuff together, but this first part, 
looks a little ugly. I've got to do something with that first. So I'm going to take 6 squared to the fourth power. Let's think back. I have a power to a power, which means I multiply them together. Okay, so that's going to be 6 to the eighth times 6 to the third. Now my powers are being multiplied together, but I have the same base. So I can add the exponents. So I was just saying I have eight sixes here and three sixes there all multiplied together. So I have a total of six to the eleventh power. And hopefully you would agree this is much simpler than the original statement. Okay, letter B. Hmm. I have different bases. I have a 3 and a 4. Or I'm sorry, a 3 and a B. But my power, my exponent, is the same. 4 in both cases. So I can take this and kind of combine my bases using this property. The power of a product property. So I have 3 times B. And the whole thing to the fourth power. By the way, just so you're aware, it would actually be wrong to write it like this. This statement and this statement are not the same. This bottom statement says you have 3 times b to the fourth. If I would expand 3 times b, 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 b. This is not what we should have. This top statement says you have 3b to the fourth. So you have 3b, 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 3b. And this rearranged would give us back to our original statement. But this exponent here on the bottom, this 4, the exponent is only on the b. It is not on the 3. So I just want to make that point clear. It comes up a lot each year as we're starting to learn about exponents. We make that mistake, and I'll probably mention it quite a few more times. Letter C. Ooh, I've got a negative exponent and a positive exponent. Well, the base is the same, 3, 3. And since I'm just multiplying them together, I can add the exponents together. Okay, so that's going to give me 3 to the negative 2 plus 2, negative 2 plus 2, which is 3 to the 0, which is 1. So this is using the zero product, or the zero power property as well. Lastly, let's see. Um, well, I'd like to get rid of this negative. I'm going to move that whole term up top. So I'm going to have 5 to the 6th. If I move this whole piece to the top, I'm going to have times by 7 to the 6th. Now I have two different powers with the same exponent, so I can combine the bases together. I can get a 5 times 7 to the 6th, and 5 times 7, well that's just 35. So in each of these problems we had to use the properties we were given, the properties we know, to simplify, to make sure we don't have any negative exponents, and to basically just Take the information and scrunch it as much as possible. Get rid of all some of the extra useless um, pieces, like having two different exponents when we can have one exponent. Or in this case, it means clear to see here we have three different exponents where our final answer, simplified, only has one. Okay, so I've done these first four. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause the video. I'd like you to try these next four. When you're ready to continue, Hit play, and we'll go through it together. Okay, here we go. So in letter E, I would take this piece here, 7 to the power of 0 is 1. 
2 times 1 is 2. And we could, I guess, leave it like this. I mean, we're talking about exponents. If you really wanted to simplify farther, I mean, 2 to the third power is um, 8. But we didn't really multiply it in the last problems. Like here we had 35 to the 6th and 6 to the 11th. We didn't multiply. But, I mean, if you want to, I suppose you could multiply. But this is the simplified with exponents. Um, letter F. Well, I have a negative. I don't like that. But my powers are the same. My bases are the same. So I'm going to start by adding the exponents together. So I have 6 to the negative 5 plus 3 gives me 6 to the negative 2. Okay, so now I'm down to only one exponent, but my exponent's negative. That's no good. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to pass it over the fraction bar. The fraction bar and make it a positive. So my 6 squared is going to go on the bottom, positive, and on the top of the fraction bar, I'm going to have a 1. So I have 1 over 6 squared. Letter G. Let's see. Um, x squared to the 8th. Okay, that, that one's simple. That's just a power to an exponent, or power to a power, power of a power. So that's just, you multiply the exponents together, so x to 2 times 8 gives me x to the 16. And then big ugly h, let's see here. Hmm. Well, what if I rearrange here a little bit? If I put my 4's together, and my 5's together, so I have 5 to the 7th, times 5 to the negative 3 times by 4 times by 4 to the third okay so the fives here I can add the exponents together giving me 5 to the 7 plus negative 3 is 4 and here 4 to the third and this would be 4 to the power of 1. If you don't see an exponent, it's always to the power of 1. So that's combined together gives me 4 to the power of 4. Ah, and look at that. We have the same exponent with different bases. So we can combine the bases together. Give me 5 to the 4, or 5 times 4 to the 4th. And 5 times 4 is 20 to the 4th. And there we have our finally simplified answer. This big ugly mess simplifies down to 20 to the 4th power. If you need to review the video, go back and check out some of these problems again to make sure you're understanding the concepts behind the problems and the different properties. I recommend you do it. Um, this is not something that I would spend one day on and think you got it. It's going to take practice to make sure you understand. But let's look at some applications. It says the side lengths of a square are uh, x to the third power feet long. So let me draw myself a square here. So each side is x cubed feet. The formula to find the area of a square is area equals the side length squared, where s is the side length. Okay, length of each side. Write a simplified variable expression for the area of the square. So they're not actually telling us what x is. They're not asking us to find it. They want us to write a simplified variable expression. So the side length of my square is x cubed, and that side length is squared, so I'm just going to simplify this, and a power to a power, I just multiply the exponents together. That gives me x to the sixth power. And that one's pretty easy. Next says, 
The volume of a cube can be found using the formula V equals S cubed. This sounds very similar to the last problem. Okay, so let's see. We got ourselves a cube. Boom. Okay, and volume formula S cubed. All right. Cube A, uh, cube A has side lengths of 5 squared centimeters. So each side is 5 squared centimeters. Cube B has side length 3 cubed centimeters. So 5 squared, 3 cubed. Okay. Write the ratio of the volume of cube A to cube B. So the first thing we have to do is if they want a ratio of the volumes, meaning I want to have volume of cube A over volume of cube B. That's this this is the ratio that they want, right? The ratio of the volume of cube A to cube B. I need this as my final answer, except I need to know what those volumes are. So for cube A, the volume for cube A is going to be side length cubed. I'm just writing down the formula. And we know each side is 5 squared. So the volume of cube A, let's see, 5 squared cubed, you multiply those exponents, giving me 5 to the 6th power. Okay, I'm not sure if I need to go farther than that yet or not. Let's start with B. Volume of cube B, same thing, same formula, so we're talking about volume. And 3 to the third, to the third. So volume of B is, I multiply my exponents together since it's power to a power, 3 to the ninth power. And I suppose since we haven't been really multiplying out our exponents yet, I don't think we need to in this problem. So I'm going to say my ratio here, if I actually just substitute my values in here, the ratio of volume of cube A is 5 to the 6th, over the volume of cube B is 3 to the 9th. So there is my ratio of the volume of cube A to cube B. Volume of cube A, volume of cube B as a ratio. Volume of cube A, volume of cube B as a ratio. And I'm done. I would like you to try this problem on your own. Please pause the video, try the problem, when you're ready to continue, hit play, and we'll go through it together. Okay, it says the ratio of two drill bits is 4 to 4 to the negative fifth power. What is this ratio using only positive exponents? Okay, so 4 over 4 to the negative fifth. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole piece and I'm going to move it to the top because I want this negative exponent to become positive. So that's going to give me 4 and this guy goes up top so 4 to the 5th and down here I would just honestly I'd have 1 that would be what's on the bottom of the fraction. But if you ever have a fraction just over 1 you really don't need that bottom part. Hmm. This looks like, like it can simplify even more. That's 4 to the 1st power and 4 to the 5th power. Ah, they have the same base but different exponents. So I can add the exponents together. So 4 to the 1 plus 5 gives me 4 to the 6th power. Here's one more for you to try. It says your friend is trying to simplify the expression 5 
x squared to the negative fourth power. Explain to your friend how to simplify the expression using only positive exponents. Be sure to explain when you are using a property. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, do the problem. When you're ready to continue, hit play, and we'll go through it together. Okay, so here's what I would do. I would probably, well, I guess let's just start. 5x squared negative fourth. Hmm. First thing I would do is we're going to have to multiply these together because I want to get rid of these parentheses. So I'm going to take my 5x squared to the negative fourth, which is going to give me 5x to the oh, negative 8. Now, something we haven't talked about a lot, this x squared to the negative fourth, we got that. I think that part's pretty clear. What you may not know is if you did this on your own, this 5 actually should be to the negative fourth power as well. You go, why? Why would you have to? Well, over here, the x is squared. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. But the 5 is to the power of 1. And 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. So this, product, this property we used to get here is the, make sure I have my name right, so when you have the exponent to an exponent, power to a power, that is power of a power property. So we used the power of a power property. Now, because we don't want any negative exponents, we need to get rid of them. So we want to get rid of negative exponents. So to do that, we're going to use the negative exponent property, which tells us if you have a negative exponent, if you pass it over the fraction bar, it becomes a positive exponent. So there's my fraction bar. So I'm going to get 1 over 5 to the 4th times x to the 8th. And that is the negative power property. Is it negative exponent? Negative power. The negative exponent property. And I think we did everything we needed to do. Let's see, it said, your friend is trying to simplify the expression. Explain to your friend how to simplify the expression. Using only positive exponents, check. Be sure to explain when you're using each property. So we use the power of a power property to get rid of the parentheses. We used, we want to get rid of the negative exponents. We use the negative exponent property to move the powers on the bottom and they become positive. All right, so for our summary, this again is on the Collins writing page in front of your packet. This is lesson three. It is a type one. And let's make it like two minutes instead of one minute. <coughs> Questions are, what property do you find the easiest? So out of the properties we learned today, what property do you find the easiest and why? And then what property do you find the hardest and why? This just, just kind of gets you to reflect on your own learning here. So go ahead and answer these questions in the Collins writing page in the front of your packet. Um, and when you're done, that's the end of the lesson. This has been Lesson 1.3. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.